wants to ask any questions that you have, saving money, couponing, wherever you want to go. And it's always fun to come with a topic. We recently did this back in May, we talked about just lots of ways to cut your grocery budget, but I've gotten so many recent Facebook messages and emails of folks that are really trying to either get back into couponing or trying to cut uh, just in general that I thought, you know, let's just cover it again because it's never hurts for some of us to get a refresher. But if we have a lot of folks that are needing to save money, this is a great, a great way to get it across just lots of information into your head. So to dive in, um, my plan is to try to cover lots of ways that you could cut your grocery budget, not necessarily all on coupons, but there's definitely a significant way using coupons. Um, so I'm not gonna ignore that those are there. I would encourage you to look into them, uh, easy ways to save. So we're gonna try to get through all of it. If you have questions, whether it's on topic or off topic, that is fine. Leave your questions in the comments and either myself or my husband uh, will see them and he will, his job is to make sure that I don't miss them. So he sends me little chats and tries to make sure that I don't miss them. Um, and then a lot of folks will just answer them for you too because y'all are awesome like that. Um, so we always have a good number of folks that join us most Monday nights. So hello to all of you guys um, that are all, always back uh, and hello to everyone else that's new too. So as we, um, kind of jump in um, and you know Evelyn saying yes food prices are crazy um, I agree that is why I want us to just hit it again and honestly to start on that I don't expect these prices to change for a little bit this is going to be our status quo probably through the end of the summer hopefully they are going to come back hopefully this isn't going to be just this massive 2020 inflation but we really have seen some huge jumps and I wanted to show you just how huge. So uh, last night, my husband was on the phone with um, his dad and we had just been talking about, uh, you know, all the price changes. And so I was uh, pulling up a report for him to show his dad exactly how bad it is. And I thought I would just start with that to show you guys. So this is from the USDA. I know it's a lot here on this screen, but really what I want you to focus on is this graph over here. Um, and you know, it does look nice. It does look like it's changing a little bit. Let me make it really big for you. So this is the weekly kind of like overall price of what a cow could return. But look at this. So the blue line is last year and the dotted line is the last five year average. And then look at the red line. Like, and this is for the whole country, by the way, this is just the USDA beef summary report. Now it does show that it's come back down, but that's just one graph. Uh, and we're really not seeing that on the other graphs. So when you start to really compare what the price is doing, um, this is the dress weight and you can Google what all these mean. It doesn't really matter. I just want you to see folks are tracking it. And when you compare it to last year's numbers, even if you don't even know what it's comparing, it still doesn't look very pretty. Um, now, in reality, it's the price. It's the overall price that the cow is worth um, for the individual cut up. So you can kind of get just a feeling of where things are um, and these aren't pretty. So if you're feeling that prices are up, it's not in your head. Uh, they really are. Beef is the one, if we want to talk meat, beef is the one that's really kind of gone exponentially crazy. For us, that has meant just immediate changes in what we eat around the house. Every Sunday, we would always have a beef roast. That is off the menu. I am not paying 24 to $26 for a beef roast. Yes, it's gonna feed seven people, but that's a lot of money for one meal, and we would never do that. So it's finding other cuts of meat, other ways to save. Yesterday, we had a whole chicken. Um, so for me, for a Sunday lunch, it needs to be something that I can have in the oven that is cooking with our delay bake oven. It's magical. Uh, and it's ready when we get home from church. Uh, so a, a whole chicken, a pork tenderloin, there are other options, but beef is off the table currently uh, with that price. Will we see it come back down? You know, who knows? According to the top graph, maybe, but I really wouldn't expect it to be even by the end of August, it's gonna be hovering here for a little bit. So that's why we wanna talk groceries. Uh, you know, there's your like true vivid look at the fact that prices are going up. It's not in your head. Um, and it's not just beef either. 
it just gives you a very good clear cut picture of how huge it is um, because it's it's pretty massive over the price of last year versus this year. Um, the next thing, just in case you're curious on that, I did pull a different report from the USDA. And if you wanna look at these, just Google USDA beef reports. There's a lot of them, um, but a different report. They are actually slaughtering the same number of cows as last year. So it's just in general because of demand. Uh, it's not a supply issue, it's a demand issue and that they can then charge more because uh, they're not increasing the number of cows that they slaughter, nor do they really have the ability to do that. It's that folks are wanting it and folks are buying it uh, like crazy. So how can we make some changes? Because uh, I don't want to get off on it, you know, a whole 40 minute soapbox on the price of beef. Uh, how can we make some changes to our grocery budget? Uh, and let's just dive straight into that because that really is um, where we all need to be. We can't, we can't make changes to their prices. We can make changes to what we buy. Um, so that's really where we wanna go in terms of focusing forward. You know, focus on what you can control. That's basically it, right? Um, so saving with Susanna, great question. Where's the best place to buy food? Uh, so let's go basics here. I really want you to be in a grocery store for most of the items that you're buying. I don't, and when I say that, I mean like a grocery store. So not Walmart, not Target, not a big box store, but an actual grocery store because they do run sales. Um, and those sales are what we wanna grab. I wanna grab what is on sale this week. I wanna grab what is on sale next week and then slowly kind of build my pantry from sale items. Not shopping just on what I, what I need because what you need is not on sale. The odds of you needing it and it happening to be on sale this week is pretty slim. So I wanna get into a habit where I look at what's on sale this week and I buy enough of that to last me until it is back on sale. And for most grocery stores, they run on a six week cycle. So if I see that it's on sale today, it will not be back on sale for about six weeks. Meaning I need to get enough to last six weeks. Now, don't go overboard here. You know, how many times in the next six weeks are you gonna eat the same meals over and over again? You know, max, I would guess for most of us, maybe three times you're gonna eat that meal, probably more like twice for tacos or for something like that. So I don't need, you know, 17 boxes of tacos. I need enough for six weeks. Um, but when I'm doing that, I'm getting it at a crazy good price. So an example that might not even be super cheap, but right now you could go to Publix and Publix we could get chicken broth as low as a buck 33 for a 32 ounce container of chicken broth. So if you wanted to make, we had chicken noodle soup tonight, if you wanted to do something like that with your chicken broth, it's a buck 33 this week. Regular price for chicken broth, 279. No, it's not a free item. You know, we're not, if all we did was eat free items, we would all be very, very hungry and eat toothpaste. Uh, so we're not gonna just focus on that, but it is 50% off. This is still a great week to grab that. And if that's something that you regularly use as you're cooking meals, then grabbing three or four of them to get you until it is back on sale. That's what we wanna focus on. You just save 50%. So being in a grocery store, focusing on the sales and adding in coupons when you can, it's definitely the way you wanna go. So uh, Mikhail, great question kind of to tailor into that. Do food coupons run on a cycle? Yes and no. So in the summer, we tend to actually see more food coupons in the summer and the fall than we do in the spring. So I guess it's a good, we're in a good spot. Spring, we tend to see a lot of cleaning coupons and we're all stuck in this, like I'm tired of cleaning, just give us food coupons. Um, but that's just what they do every year. And in the fall is actually when we see the most in terms of food coupons that come out. Um, there are some coupons that we do see regularly, like every month Procter & Gamble is gonna give you kind of the same offers on personal care and their Procter & Gamble household products, but they don't make any uh, food products, so it doesn't help you very much there. Um, other brands, we will see regular coupons from General Mills. They come out uh, right around the first of the month. That's when we see the big push of new General Mills coupons. So look for those next week. They'll be available as printables, but they're also usually in inserts once a month too. Uh, and they're usually good for a month. So these coupons that we see on a regular basis, you kind of always have a new supply coming with them. And hopefully that helps a little bit. 
uh, for brand specific coupons, Mikhail, we don't usually see. So, um, and I guess I'm naming Normals that is a brand, but what it really what I mean is if you're talking something that's a super tiny brand, uh, like Annie's Mac and Cheese, we don't always see that on a rotation. There's not necessarily a rhyme or a reason consumer wise that we would be like, this is the week that we get Annie's coupons. Not really. So a lot of those coupons, I would encourage you to use the database that is on Southern Savers. So if you've not ever used the database that is on Southern Savers, we have thousands of coupons that are in it. Um, I can actually pull it up and show it to you, but the database, if you click right here on the top of the site, it's going to load and then you can search specifically for the coupons that you want. Uh, and there are a lot there. So if I'm wanting Annie's coupons, since I just mentioned that, there are all of the available coupons that we know of for Annie's. Um, I was really just trying to pick a very tiny brand there, but if you you know want Huggies, we've got a lot of Huggies. Some of these are coupons that I could load straight to my store's card. They're Food Lion digital coupons, Publix digital coupons. Some are printables, some are inserts, but the database is gonna show you anything that we know of that is there um, so that you can grab that coupon and hopefully save some money with it. So use the database, it's a, it's a huge resource for finding a specific coupon that you're wanting. Uh, you obviously don't have to put in brands here, you could just put in a product. So if I wanted a coupon um, on just general diapers, I could take out Huggies and just put in diapers and I'm gonna find every coupon that we have for every brand. So use it however it helps you, but it's there and that's a great way to find specific coupons if you're just getting started. Um, there, It's also part of the Southern Savers app if you're in the store and you're hunting for a coupon too. Uh, Deborah asked, do food coupons have longer expiration dates than personal care coupons? A lot of times, Deborah, we do see that food coupons have kind of that 30 to possibly like a 45 day expiration date. We used to see 90 years and years ago. Uh, it really depends on the brand. Some brands, it is always the same. So um, my mom is the one that types up insert coupons for me and she literally has these brands memorized. So I'll say, hey mom, does that, does that coupon have a limit on it? Uh, she's like, oh, those coupons don't ever have limits to me. Like it, she, she knows them better than I do. Uh, but for most of them, 30 days is generally like the kind of understood expiration date for most brands that we see. The difference, Deborah, really is when it comes to personal care, there are some brands like Aleve, for example, that will give us some really high value coupons, but typically those are good for one week. Uh, so whenever you see them, you need to have a plan to use them uh, or not use them if you don't want to, but uh, you don't. Want, it, you get that one a week, and that's it. Uh, we don't tend to see that, thankfully, in food. Food gives us a little bit longer to use our coupons than those high-value personals. Uh, so that might be where you were uh, kind of what made you think of that question anyway. Um, Mariana says when, or Marianne, sorry, when is Publix going to start having special coupon books again? I feel like they should offer ways to have them be digital. So they are offering some booklets um, and one right now there is a hurricane booklet. Um, I have them in the database already. So if you actually go to the database that I was just showing you and you type in the word hurricane, it will pull it up. Um, I will also just go ahead and um, stick this link in the comments too. So if you want to specifically print these, you could. Um, all of those coupons are public store coupons. So it gives you some. We're not seeing a, a ton of booklets in the store. I suspect, this is just my guess based on talking to some store managers, that we will not see the green and the purple flyers back until possibly August, if not September. Uh, Publix is where their like, stock is starting to feel more normal, but the stores aren't feeling more normal. So the store employees, I think, uh, the last time I was talking to someone, they said it just felt feels like they're stuck in Thanksgiving mode uh, and that the holidays just aren't coming. But that's what it feels like to them in terms of the amount that people are buying uh, and the stock and the turnover on stock. So they're kind of tired. And so they're, they're really leaving those flyers off to help employees, but they're also leaving those flyers off because of brands. So brands are not trying to um, look like they are trying to encourage their products, um, encourage shopping, and hopefully that's gonna calm down a bit and we're gonna get those back. But we do have some printables, so there, that hopefully you can grab that link. 
um, and at least get those few that are there that are all store coupons. Uh, and Karen says she misses Harris Teeter Super Doubles. Hopefully we're gonna see those come back to Karen at the end of summer. Uh, we don't typically see a lot of Super Doubles during the summer. Um, so, it, you know, maybe we're, we're missing it um, and we'll use our time wisely, I guess. If we were already gonna get a break, at least it can be right now and not when we would, we would have seen a bunch of them. Um, uh, let's see, so, um, oh, um, Bam is saying we bought a half a cow at the start of the pandemic when I saw they were putting limits on meat. It is an investment, but it does pay off. And I agree. So in terms of saving on meat, you know, mentioning the, the price of beef going up, a huge way to save on meat is to buy in bulk. Um, whether that's direct from a farmer, whether it's direct from a processor, whether it's from a restaurant supply store, you have a lot of options. In my area, we have a US Food Chef store. I know I, I mentioned them, I feel like at least once a week. I actually went there this morning and we grabbed um, some clearance meat. So the chef store does do that. They mark things down and I am a yellow tag girl in the chef store. Um, so we got a huge 13 pound pork loin, just long pork loin, cut it into three different pork roasts, uh, maybe even four, my husband took care of that one. Um, but that was uh, right at like $1.20 a pound. It's a great price for uh, pork loin. And we grabbed a case of whole chickens. It's a lot of chickens, but that was at like 80 cents a pound uh, marked down on clearance. I can't touch those prices in a grocery store, even on sale. Uh, now, a case of whole chickens, yes, I have a freezer for all of this, um, but to you know get, I guess it was like 10, I don't know, the husband vacuum sealed him, he did, he did all of it, which was great. Um, but that is a huge way to save on meat, to be able to have the freezer space, to be able to buy in bulk, and then to kind of grab it when you see it on sale. I did not buy any beef, that's all that I bought, was the case of chicken um, and the pork loin but that gets us through a number of Sunday lunches uh, and other meals on some inexpensive meat. So that's really where I wanted to point you guys to as well. Um, and you know, wanting to get into couponing it in through all of this, but to talk meat specifically for a little bit, um, you know, if bulk isn't an option, if you don't have the freezer space or you don't have the, the access to find a place to buy it in bulk, then your other option is to focus on meats that are less expensive. So right now, if you're curious what those are, chicken is less expensive. It is still uh, pricier than it normally is, but it is definitely less expensive than beef. Um, sausage is a good one. We see sausage regularly on sale. There is no sausage shortage. Uh, so going in and grabbing those when they're on sale. Uh, for us, one night this week, planning on red beans and rice. Not only is it a beans meal, but one package of sausage in with red beans and rice can stretch for our whole family. And that one package of sausage on sale, probably like two bucks. It's not a super expensive meat and it is easy to put in with other things that stretch. So chicken, sausage, look for inexpensive fish. Uh, and I don't mean fresh here, so, I mean, we're trying, if you're really trying to cut the budget, you're just getting some meat on the table, your inexpensive fish are the fish that are vacuum sealed and frozen in the grocery store. Um, so they were fresh at one point, but they're frozen now. Uh, and most grocery stores, when they put them on sale, we're really talking like four to $5 a pound for, uh, and it's not your expensive fish usually, it's your whiting and your cod and your tilapia. Those are still protein. You're trying to put protein on the table that is inexpensive. So that's a great one to look for, um, for just inexpensive meats. And pork as well, uh, and this can be pork in all sizes. We were joking this weekend, Bilo and Winn-Dixie ran a weekend sale on Boston Butt over the weekend for 99 cents a pound. It's a great price. The chef store has it for 99 cents a pound as well, if you have a chef store in your area. 99 cents a pound, guys. Yes, you have to smoke it. Uh, you know, it's not cooked, but uh, get a smoker going, figure out a way to do it in the oven if you don't have a smoker. Uh, and you have barbecue, super, super cheap. Uh, let's eat it for breakfast. It's like bacon, right? It, just in a different form. Um, so figure out ways that you can get inexpensive meats, get creative with them if you have to, but it's a huge way to save. And another one on meat too, we talked about this just a couple weeks ago, I know. Um, but no meat Mondays, take it, take it out, do it a couple nights a week. Um, but adding in beans, adding in other sources of protein, 
it's gonna be a huge way to cut your budget. To leave those high ticket items off completely is going to be a huge way to save. So do that if you can. Um, you will be much happier in the end than paying the seven and eight bucks for um, beef whatever, because it's all super expensive. Um, okay, uh, what about the limits that stores have set? We have eight kids. So I guess multiple stores. So Jill, it depends on your store. In our store, in our area, the limits are on only certain items. So the whole store doesn't have limits. It's um, for some reason soup, canned soup has still got like limits of two. Rice has limits uh, in some stores, pasta uh, and meat has limits. So I don't buy my meat in a grocery store as I just explained, but for hopefully for a lot of the things that you're needing, the limits are gonna work for you inside the store that you're in, or it might mean multiple trips that week. So I still am gonna grab the sales, but I'm gonna go on Wednesday and I'm gonna go on Friday. Uh, for us, we're a family of seven, five kids, uh, but uh, not a family of 10. Uh, and I am still able to get what we need in one grocery trip. Um, I will tell you, so some things have changed in what we've been purchasing and I, I it, we'll try to do a Facebook Live this week for folks, but in all honesty, when I go to the grocery store, we aren't purchasing a lot of snacks, we aren't purchasing juice. All these things that are really kind of splurge items, they're off and we're eating um, a lot of just meals that we're making from scratch, meals that we're making from what's in the freezer and from the pantry and trying to cut down on all of those things that are coming home, uh, using up what we have. So uh, when it comes to looking at the grocery store, that might be your focus too, Jill, is that you're gonna say, what can I make and make a bunch of, uh, and then potentially have in bulk to make from. So uh, again, talking to the chef's store for a second, you don't just have to get meat there. They sell rice in a 50 pound bag. They, you know, so if you do have a large family, maybe it is looking for a different route to get um, some of the staple items that you need in a large bulk form. So then I'm using just the grocery store to fill in for right now until prices come down and limits go away. That might help you too. Um, uh, so Candace says, what day of the week is best to go shopping to be able to get the deals? The coupons come out on Sunday, new sales start on Wednesday. So really Candace, it's up to you. It's for you when it works in your schedule. I do most of my shopping on Wednesday because I'm already in the store on Wednesday trying to get unadvertised deals. So if you live in the Columbia, South Carolina area and you see a random person walking around taking pictures of groceries, that's me. Uh, I do that every Wednesday. And I've had a lot of people that have just stared at me funny and then other people who've known who I was. Um, I just shop because I'm in there. So just do what works for you. If you get coupons that pair in with the sale on Sunday and there are a lot of them and they make you wanna wait, then wait that week. But most weeks, the coupons that pair in, we're talking about like two or three items and we will see them back on sale again before the coupon expires. So you may not grab them this week, but you could just grab them in a few more weeks um, versus you know having to make two trips if you didn't wanna do that. Uh, another thing, if you're brand new too, is for me, we live a good 25 minutes from Publix or Bilo, Lowe's Foods, the grocery stores that I would rarely go to. So I am not gonna make that haul all the way in just to grab another deal. Like, oh, we found a deal, let me go drive all the way to Publix. Uh-uh, that is not gonna happen. Maybe if we were already in town, but it's pretty rare. So we tend to shop one day a week and get everything that we need. Uh, and if those coupons came out on Sunday, I'm probably just gonna end up using them with another deal on another trip uh, in a future week. So hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Okay. Um, so let's talk planning meals really quick and let's talk about doing it along with the sales. Um, so if we're focusing on sales only, uh, using the item, the lists that are on Southern Savers, using the item search that's on Southern Savers, all of these things can come in handy for you. So uh, someone was asking, is there a tutorial for Southern Savers? We have done that. If you look back through the videos, you would see it, but I can kind of give you just the general gist here. So if you're at the top of the site, pick the store that you want. So let's focus on Publix for a second. The new Publix ad is up. I post that usually over the weekend. So it went up yesterday. Um, this is the ad that won't even start till Wednesday. So we've got some time. We have multiple lists here to pick from. So I'm gonna pick the upcoming Publix ad. 
I have all of the deals that are going to start in three days, really. So we've got a little bit of a heads up, but perfect for you to sit down and decide, what do I want? What can I plan meals here from? What do I already have on hand? You know, use your list, focus on what's on sale because it isn't going to be back on sale for six weeks. Maybe I don't need to eat it this week. Maybe I really can plan based on what's on the, in the pantry, but I still need to stay stocked. So what is here that is gonna help me stay stocked that maybe we need? Um, bacon, right off the top, you know, we've got buy one, get one bacon. That's the, it's a fancy bacon, but it's still buy one, get one. You know, so looking at what are the meats, what are the produce, what can I make meals around? Uh, remember when you're using these lists, so this is the Publix list again, anything that is on this list is the best price this week. So I do not type the entire Publix weekly ad Instead, I only type the items that are a good price. So if it's there, this is a, it's a good week to grab it. And you're gonna go down, you can check these boxes, you can add things straight to your shopping list as you check boxes, and you create a shopping list at the bottom of the page. Now let's say that you don't wanna be store specific, you just really want, um, uh, let's go vague and just assume something's on sale, but we just really want some sausage here. Uh, um, so you can use the item search that's on the right hand side of the page. So I've just typed in the word sausage and told it to search. Now I ha am logged in and anybody can create an account. I had someone send me a message earlier today asking how much it costs. Southern Tavers is free, there's no cost. So I'm logged in and the site knows that I only shop a certain number of stores and you can set that in your profile. So for me, it is returning the current sales on sausage at these six stores, um, which there are two. And I can decide, is this what I'm wanting? Uh, you know, maybe this isn't the price that I wanna go for for this sausage. Maybe I'm gonna look for something else. But you can use that item search to find a specific item that you're also needing. So those are great tools to use. Uh, all of the stores across the top again, picking the list that you need or the item search to find out if it's on sale this week so that you can focus solely on the sales. It's a huge way to save money, focus solely on the sales. Um, and hopefully that helps. That's a crash course. Like I just gave you a big rundown in two minutes. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not too overwhelming as you dive in on that. Uh, Michelle says, what do we drink if we don't buy juice? So our kids, I, I will do this for them. I will buy the powdered like um, country time lemonade mix when it's on sale. So we have a few of those in the pantry and they will make their own pink lemonade, usually by the glass. So we just keep a spoon in it and we don't usually keep a pitcher of it, um, but they'll do pink lemonade. They will do chocolate milk. Uh, milk, honestly, it's hard to imagine this, but milk by the gallon, guys, is cheaper than juice if you are getting a, a good price on milk. Now, it depends on where you live, but a gallon of milk, uh, if I, lately we've been going to Kroger to get all the Kroger unadvertised deals. So if I'm in Kroger, a gallon of milk in Kroger is a buck 79 in our area. Uh, a gallon is 128 ounces, a bottle of juice, 64 ounces. So unless you're getting juice for 65 cents, a container of juice, which you aren't, milk is cheaper. So um, our kids will drink milk, water, or that powdered lemonade is typically what they do. Um, for me, it's water or sparkling water. I do buy sparkling water when it's on sale or, um, with um, the sparkling water creator. If you have one of those, you can make it work. If you have a sparkling water addiction, I do um, lemon in your water. You know, anything to make it feel less boring works too. Buying a few lemons is a lot cheaper than buying a, a few containers of juice too. Um, but there's ways that you can make that work, but those things add up. And so when we're focused, just, let's just focus on getting meals on the table for one week. That's what I would encourage you to do. For one week, I am just gonna buy what we need to eat and we're gonna leave everything off. And let's see how much lower that makes your food bill. So we're not bringing home snacks and we're not bringing home juice and we're not bringing home anything else that isn't for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, and I think you'll be pretty surprised how much those things add to your budget when we aren't really thinking about them because you're just adding you know, here and there and you don't feel like they add up, but they do. Um, which Lisa's asking, what is our monthly budget? So Lisa, on a weekly basis, I'm aiming to stay around 70 to $75 a week. Um, so for the month, that you know would depend on how many weeks we're in the month. But 
typically would be about a 300 to 375 budget if it was a four or five week month. Um, now for us in the grocery store, that's very doable. We do buy our meat in bulk and it doesn't, I do not include produce in that number. So produce for us comes strictly from a produce co-op that we are a part of in the area. Uh, and we pay $25 for literally a laundry basket full of produce uh, because that's what we take. Everybody takes their laundry baskets, lines them up, and we're probably coming home with about 60 pounds of produce. Um, and we do that twice a month. So that is $50 worth of produce that isn't really in my $75. My $75 is what I get at the grocery store budget. Um, meat for us, I tend to purchase also like every other month because we're buying it in bulk from the chef store. So I haven't had to buy beef. Uh, we bought some right as prices were going up. We ground our own. We have not touched beef since, probably won't touch. So when we run out of what's in the freezer, we'll run out for a little while uh, and we'll just eat off of the meat that we have, which we have a lot of chicken now. Uh, we've got a lot of chicken wings from past purchases uh, and then a lot of ham and other items that we've grabbed on sale. Um, so hopefully that helps as we're heading into the grocery store, kind of what I'm focusing on to get meals on the table. Okay. Um, trying to in terms of meals too let's let's go over this a little bit what are some inexpensive meals to help you get on the table um we recently went over and went to a kind of like quasi birthday party birthday parties are unique uh in lockdown or unlockdown mode south carolina is not really locked down that much anymore but chatting with a family while we were there, the mom mentioned that for them, cereal is a splurge. Cereal is a like it's your birthday. So we bought a box of cereal because to her it's expensive. Now to me, cereal on sale with a coupon, it's like 50 cents a box, uh, maybe 99 cents a box. So cereal is not a splurge and cereal is an easy breakfast item uh, for just getting food in stomachs is it you know the healthiest ever no but do i want to wake up and cook you a hot breakfast every single morning no i don't um though that is inexpensive as well so eggs for breakfast cereal eggs potentially bagels and those types of items if you're buying them on sale i know that i am naming carbs uh, go eggs if you're on keto eggs are very inexpensive uh, in terms of a protein that you can get in the store for us, eggs come from the side yard, uh, and in a, uh, another month, we're gonna be eggs everywhere um, because we got, it back in March, 25 new chickens, uh, and they should start laying in the next month. Um, but we get five eggs a day from the chickens that we had, so eggs are an easy one for us. Cereal, eggs, uh, all of those items, that is an easy breakfast. Um, granola as well, whether you make your own granola bars. This week at Publix, you can get the Nature Valley granola bars, even the protein variety, for like a buck 49 for a box of five to six count. Um, so at five to six count, that's five breakfasts in that box for a dollar 50. It's really not a bad price. It's like 30 cents a bar. Uh, when If you think of a bar as a serving, that is literally what I would eat for breakfast and I'm done. 30 cents isn't that bad. Uh, so focus on the inexpensive things that we can get on the table. Lunch for us, basics are sandwiches, leftovers, soup, and salad. Those tend to be your go-tos around here. Um, salad, again, being from our produce baskets, and we tend to always have that uh, in the fridge. Leftovers, you have to plan. So if I'm cooking dinner, I intentionally cook extra. Um, so that there are some in the fridge uh, to pull from. Now our kids know they do have to ask because a lot of times that's what mama and daddy want, uh, but it's there. So since we're all here, I know a lot of folks in our area are still working from home. You've been working from home for eons, but you should be planning your lunches even if you aren't, even if you're taking your lunch to work. So do that, intentionally cook extra so that you've got some more in the fridge for a, a, a lunch or, or a leftover night if you wanna go that route. Uh, and then for dinner, it's just focusing on easy meats, inexpensive meats. And then another one for us, um, and we actually did this between last night and today, I just posted it to my Facebook and my Instagram stories. Yesterday for lunch, we had roast chicken, a whole roast chicken, the leftover chicken and all the juice around it in the roasting pan got put straight into a pot today and cooked most of the day to turn into chicken broth and chicken noodle soup. 
So just having a plan for how you're gonna use even the leftovers um, versus wasting you know, the little bits of meat that are still on that whole chicken, don't do that. It can be a whole nother meal. Even if you're grabbing a rotisserie chicken, so maybe you're like, I am not cooking a whole chicken, I don't even know how. You grab a rotisserie chicken in the grocery store, you can still turn that into chicken noodle soup or other meals um, using your meat wisely by planning that into your meal plan from the start. So thinking ahead on what you're gonna grab. So hopefully that helps. We do eat some basic meals around here too. So if you're like, you know, imagining how would I cook for this many people on $75, we aren't off adding in fancy things to our meals. Uh, we're, you know, pretty much meat and potatoes kind of family. Uh, rice is a pretty good staple around here, at least probably two to three times a week that white rice is on your plate. Uh, sometimes we make it fancy and we turn it into homemade Spanish rice, but not often. Pasta is not a big one. My husband's not a huge pasta fan, so we don't tend to go to pasta as our starch. We did have it tonight in chicken noodle soup, but it's not a common one. Rice tends to be, or potatoes, so I don't know if that helps to give you all this background on what we eat, but hopefully it's some ideas. Um, okay, um, so to jump into some other comments, Colt says, interesting, what, what are my thoughts on Food Lion purchasing the Bilo stores? It makes me kind of sad. Bilo in our area is one of the few stores that doubles coupons. So Food Lion coming in, Food Lion doesn't really run a ton of great sales. They don't double coupons um, for couponers, in a sense, folks trying to save money. It really just takes away one great store that we had. Um, sad to see Bilo go. Uh, will it change Food Lion? No. Adding 40 more stores is not gonna make Food Lion any more competitive. It's not gonna make them change their game. Um, it's just how they run. So. Uh, there are things that you can grab there, but I think you're gonna do better to just head to Publix or Kroger if you have those stores in your area over Food Lion. Um, is it cheaper to buy store brand versus store sales? Great question, Jill. So typically, we wanna stick with national brands. This is always my go-to example. Pasta, national brand pasta on sale with a coupon, almost free, maybe 25 cents a box and you are not gonna find 25 cent house brand pasta. You're not definitely not gonna find free house brand pasta. So focusing on the national brands is always gonna be where you wanna, where you wanna go. You're gonna get a better price on sale with a coupon uh, than you would with just the store brand. First, the store brands rarely go on sale and then we never have a coupon for them. Um, so more often than not, national brand for most of the things that you grab. There are some exceptions, so I do I do actually have an exception here. Uh, this is Lowe's Foods dried beans. There are some things that there isn't really a national brand for, nor do we ever get a coupon if there was a national brand for dried beans. So you will figure those out pretty quickly. Um, dried beans, if you're looking for a way to save money, by the way, one bag of dried beans is equal to three cans of beans. Yes, you have to think ahead. You have to soak them overnight or stick them in your Instapot for an hour or, I don't know, hit the bean button, however long that is. Um, but, you, you know, it's still a chunk of savings because this one bag on sale is a dollar and that's like getting canned beans for 33 cents a can. So a small plug for all the, can all the dried beans in the world, uh, you should buy them. They aren't just for your grandmother. You should buy them and save some money. Um, but hopefully, Jill, in the end, you're really gonna end up with mostly national brands. If you were to look in our pantry, I, it's 97% national brands. If you were to look in my bathroom, uh, it is all national brands, no house brands. So to tag team off of this, as we talk about saving money on our groceries, trying to get your budget down, I, I would be a very poor teacher if I did not mention that you should be shopping a drugstore. So for us, all of our food comes from a grocery store, but anything that we don't eat, it comes from a drugstore. So all of our cleaning supplies, detergent, et cetera, Paper goods, if you needed to purchase them, they aren't gonna be there right now, um, but paper goods, personal care, all of that from a drugstore, diapers from a drugstore, using the drugstore rewards 
Um, I don't even have to shop them every week anymore. I'm in there every week to make a video for y'all, but um, really once you're stocked on these items, you're gonna shop maybe once a month, but the prices are crazy cheap, free, free hair care, free toothpaste, free toothbrushes, uh, super cheap razors. So when I mean take all of that out of your budget, just you're not even gonna pay money for it, it frees up a lot of your budget for food. So I know that the, the focus is cutting your grocery budget, but how much more money you would have if you weren't spending anything on your personal care supplies. So huge plug for figuring out how to shop a drugstore. Just pick one of them. They run a, gr a ton of great sales. You don't have to shop all of the stores. Uh, I've always been a CVS girl, but Walgreens runs some good sales too. So it's kind of up to you and what you feel more comfortable with. If you're brand new and my little prod here is your first time that you've ever even considered going to a, a, a drugstore, then I would encourage you to start with CVS. They're much easier to figure out and get started with for new folks than Walgreens is, but you should be shopping them. Uh, so get started. I've done a lot of Walgreens and drugs uh, CVS videos. If you head to YouTube, you can watch them. You can go into the store with me and kind of get your feet wet, but do that. Um, like make that your homework so that you are trying to significantly save on one whole half of your personal budget and have that extra money to go towards grocery stores. It's gonna be huge for you. Um, and Tammy is also chiming in, Jill, with Aldi or other store brands for her. It really just comes down to your preferences. A great way to think of Aldi, if you're a regular Aldi shopper, you probably know their prices. So think of their prices as your price book. So they sell canned vegetables for 55 cents a can. Well, if I can beat 55 cents a can, then this is a definite item to grab in a grocery store. And on sale, usually we can in a grocery store. So, but you just have those prices in your head and it's a great way to be able to, to catch, oh, this is a good price to grab in the grocery store. Going down the grocery store list that's on Southern Savers or walking through the grocery store aisles, however you're gonna hunt those down. Um, <laughs> and uh, Lucretia says, I'm old enough to remember when coupons had no expiration dates. Yes, uh, I am not, I, I was not a couponer at that point, but I did have a friend share a bag. I think they're still in my fridge, or sorry, my fridge, uh, uh, in my kitchen in a drawer, a bag of super old coupons. None of them had expiration dates, but they're also like 15 cents off, 10 cents off. So I guess we do get higher values, um, but we do get expiration dates. Um, let's see. Okay. I trying to catch up uh, on everyone's questions here. Are most Bilo stores changing over to Food Lion? Um, so what's happening with Bilo? 40 of their stores across the Southeast have been sold to Food Lion and the remaining stores right now, Bilo is kind of up in the air. I have a feeling they're just going to close them, but Bilo is, or Southeast Grocers, uh, uh, is really just completely closing the Bilo line. Um, which is kind of crazy to me because that's where they started. They bought Winn-Dixie and now they've kind of decided that Winn-Dixie is their bread and butter. And so they're closing the buy low side of it all. Um, let's see. So uh, London Blue saying that she got a vacuum sealer last week and wishes she knew how to can meat. So if you've got the vacuum sealer, you're already on a good foot for being able to put up some extra things uh, canning meat, that's a whole nother category, but this is one where I would just say, you know what, Google is your friend. For us, we mostly just freeze meat, so we vacuum seal and we get the meat in the freezer, uh, but you can, you can can meat. Uh, we tend to can veggies, so can tomatoes and pickles and those types of items, um, but not meat, so I will tell you to just Google it and stick with your vacuum sealer if you wanted to for a while on getting your meat up. Okay, um, it's, it's kind of skimming past. So hopefully I didn't miss anything, but I'm, I'm I, y'all have been chatty and I've been uh, missing a lot of those questions, so sorry. So do I still do the produce co-op when our garden starts to come in? Lynn, we do tend to still do the produce co-op because our garden is not a full supply for us. Um, that and we've had lovely deer issues this year. Um, but in our garden, we have tomatoes and corn, squash and okra, uh, and a good garden should be like half okra in my opinion. It's one of my favorite foods. Um, but the produce co-op is helping us coming in with 
romaine lettuce and carrots and onions and potatoes. Um, so we aren't sticking all of that in our garden. We're focusing um, on things that our garden is able to grow. We've got a lot of clay, so we've learned the hard way that carrots for us, whenever we grew them, they were like this, this big and they stopped growing. So we stopped growing carrots uh, and started with above ground veggies versus below ground veggies. Uh, and then we just use that to stock the freezer with squash. It's like our sides, beans. We do have beans in the garden as well. So these are great side items to grow a bunch of and stock the freezer for the winter. Meanwhile, the co-op basket is kind of helping us for the next two weeks have salads and things like that while we're getting more and more things stocked up for the winter. Hopefully that helps. Um, and Carrie, I'm going to defer to my husband on the seeds. So maybe he can answer you in the comments um, because I don't buy our seeds. He handles all things garden um, and I just watch it grow. I have a pretty good, I have a pretty good gig around here uh, and occasionally we'll walk through, um, but I don't, I don't usually even get out there. I wish I did, but I, I don't, just don't have the time. Um, oh, great question. So Mikkel, the Procter & Gamble printable coupons, after you use one, will you ever get one again? So with the printables, you get to print them once a month and they reload their printable coupons at the beginning of next month every time. Uh, a lot of times they actually reload when the P&G flyer comes out. So that flyer is set to be in the um, 628 inserts coming up here and then the, um, they'll reload on the website. The digitals will do the same thing. So your store PNG digitals that you might have loaded to your Bilo card or your Publix card, yes, you use them and they're gone, but you're gonna get a whole new set of PNG digitals as soon as that uh, PNG insert comes in the Sunday paper. So they line them all up with that date. It's always, you well, it's usually the last Sunday of the month. So 628 is when it's coming out this month and then it'll be right towards the end of July as well. Um, and yes, uh, our soil does need um, amending, definitely. And in terms of soil, I would go, if you don't, if you haven't already, checking with your local extension office and getting them to test your soil to tell you what you might want to add or, or what your soil needs is a great one. They're a huge resource and everyone has them. So you may not have gotten into that side of gardening, um, but every county has some sort of county agriculture extension office, uh, in the South anyway, that you can look up Okay, um, we've made it through a ton tonight, uh, and I know we, we hovered on meal planning a lot, but my focus for that was really to get you to start to think about just some simple ways that you could make some changes to what you're buying. Um, along those lines, I did wanna mention one idea for you. If you're stuck, if you're struggling with figuring out what are some easy meals to make, um, First off, Southern Savers, if you go under the frugal living category at the top of the site, um, so frugal living right here, and you click on meal plans, um, which are normally there. I don't know where it went. We'll have to check, and I'll make sure my husband gets it stuck there. Um, oh, I know why. Tricky. I'm on a different server. Hold on. Let me reload the homepage. Um, it's funny when you play with things, and then you learn that they're wrong. Okay, frugal living from the homepage. We'll have to work on that one tomorrow. And click on menu plans. You will see all of our monthly meal plans. So we put out a free month long meal plan every single month uh, and try to focus on frugal meals that do not ask for weird ingredients that are never on sale, uh, including this one guys. The second one down is meatless meals. So use these, they're there to help you. We also have keto meal plans. Uh, if you are just stuck and cannot decide what to eat, use them because meal planning right now is probably the biggest way to be able to cut your budget. When prices are jumping on weird products, um, it's gonna be hard to keep your pantry stocked on every single thing that you might want. Uh, so just having that goal of, you know what, this is what we're gonna eat this week, this is what's on sale this week, and going from there is gonna be huge for you. Um, but if you're just getting started, one other tip for you is to get some sort of journal. So this is actually a meal planner journal, but really any sort of um, just little book, and it can be little, really. Um, but I would encourage you to get in the habit of writing down what you eat in that journal, what you make for meals. So it could be, 
It could be past tense. So if you are like, I cannot meal plan, I'm just, I can't do it. That's fine. I would still encourage you to get to where every week you sit down and you write what you did eat if you can't plan ahead, because what this is gonna be for you is a great way to look back and get some ideas. If you're stuck in a rut, you can look back and be like, oh wow, you know what, we have not had, um, this one, for example, for us, we haven't had burrito casserole in ages. Burrito casserole is super easy. It does call for a hamburger, um, but we were joking. We could probably do that with barbecue. We could work barbecue into everything. It's so much cheaper. Uh, but it can hopefully kind of remind you what are the favorite things that we like to eat? How can we rotate through some other things? Um, just, it's basically, you know, I'm not asking you to chart your calories. You can do that if you want. But this is more just keeping you keeping you on track of what have we been eating what are some things that we haven't recently done uh, and it will maybe take away some stress because when you really do sit down and map out what you eat on a regular basis you're going to realize oh wow we actually have a number of meals that we regularly cook so we don't need to panic on trying to find meals or get super creative you really already have a pretty long list that you're probably pulling from but you've just never sat down and thought about it um, so this is where just kind of keeping a little journal of some sorts for a few weeks is going to help you realize that pretty quickly what your go-to meals are. It doesn't, you don't have to do it in, in that, you know, an actual meal planning book, just some kind of journal will help for sure. And it will, and Jeff's saying, yeah, it's also going to help keep track of cost and consumption. Definitely. So it's helping you take kind of mental note of, 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 of a lot of things without really you know, even thinking that you were doing it. Uh, you know, how often did I buy something and we never ate it? Uh, if it doesn't make your list, it's not something you're eating on a regular basis, then stop buying it. Uh, you know, how many of us have canned goods that when they do food drives, you're like, yep, don't remember when we bought this one. And you're giving all those weird things the food drives. It's not necessarily helpful to them, um, but we really shouldn't have come home with it in the first place. And that is where kind of keeping that chart and realizing these are the things that we eat then those are the things that we need to be buying and it will definitely help. Um, yes, and I, and I get it, Michelle. I will confess that for years I was meal plan challenged as well. And some of it for us is really that if I map out meals at the end of the day, I will sit there and be like, I don't wanna eat that. I'm glad that we planned this, but I'm not really in the mood for that. So if that is an issue for you, leave the days of the week off. So make a plan of maybe five meals Give yourself some wiggle room, leave a couple nights open if, you know, if it totally stresses you out, but don't assign days. So we know, hey, we're gonna eat these five things this week, um, but they, we have some flexibility. They could be any night, uh, and that can also help a little bit. That's really how we got our foot in the door on meal planning, uh, and then it became just something that we did on a regular basis. And for us now, it really does help because you can sit there and say, hey, we've got leftovers of this. What can we turn the leftovers into? or it can also help in saving you some time. Let's pretend that ground beef doesn't cost a ton and you were to brown ground beef today, well, I could brown some extra to cook in another meal in a couple of nights and save yourself some cooking time down the road as well. Um, and Savannah, it, she says, I buy my groceries every week. The fresh food is better, but costly. So I, you know, I am all for fresh produce, uh, but when it comes to most of the items that we're grabbing that are filler items, uh, you know, if you're grabbing pasta or you have some other canned items that you might be throwing in, those could really be any time that you're going to grab them and you'd want to prefer to get them on sale if you could. But even going for things that are fresh and on sale, you could still get them and stick them in the freezer. Uh, putting fresh produce in the freezer isn't going to affect how great it is for you by a large extent. Uh, I mean, in a tiny little way, it doesn't have quite as many vitamins as it once did but it's still gonna be great for you uh, and in the end save you a chunk of money because you got it on sale, you got it in the freezer. Because you know, think ahead to winter time when these items are gonna be even more expensive, you don't wanna go there. We're in the peak of summer. This is the, the time to be grabbing a lot of vegetables and getting as much as you can canned or frozen or dehydrated in any way that you want uh, and put up. And yes, if you can dehydrate without a dehydrator, we actually did that this week. Our produce basket for the first time ever had a coconut in it. 
kind of one of those like, don't even know what to do with this. Uh, so got it out, figured out how to whack a hole in it. We made jokes that now if we're ever on a deserted island, we will be able to survive because we can get to the inside of a coconut but stuck it in the oven, dehydrated it at the bottom temperature the oven can handle all day, and then um, stuck it in the food processor and you have coconut flakes. Done, dehydrated and ready to use and lots of recipes, kind of fun. Just check that one off the list on things that we know what to do with now, um, but you can. So your oven at the lowest setting, it takes a lot of time, you can't do anything else with your oven, but it will dehydrate food. You do not have to purchase a dehydrator. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, farmer's markets are great when in season. Yes, you can freeze and dehydrate. You've got lots of ways to use them. So when you're heading to your farmer's market, remember you wanna buy in bulk there too. I don't really wanna go in and get one coconut. I wouldn't normally anyway. This was the first time we ever had one, but you know what I'm talking about. We wanna buy uh, you know, the bulk size of an item. So you wanna split it with some friends. Gather some folks together. They don't have to come with you. If you wanna be socially distant, that's fine. But we do wanna say, hey, we're, I'm heading to the farmer's market. Let's pool our money and let's see what we can get um, because you're gonna get a much better price by doing that and be able to put more things into the freezer. Uh, it's uh, long-term gonna make you much happier. Can you freeze or canned, canned bok choy? Uh, you could freeze it. Any of the greens that you freeze, it's not gonna come out and have crunch to it. So if you were gonna wanna turn around and use that bok choy at, in a crunchy food, it isn't gonna be crunchy. But if I wanted to turn around and put it in a salad, um, and potentially even a stir fry, I think it would still have the consistency that you were wanting, uh, unless you really love the crunch of it. It's gonna be more like a, um, like the spinach that's been cooked and the leaves are super wilted, that's what's gonna look like when it comes out of the freezer. Uh, and canned as well, it's gonna end up getting cooked just in the canning process of heating up the can. Um, but hopefully uh, you can get creative with it. Um, okay, trying to look at my list. I really did map out where we were gonna go tonight. Uh, make sure that we hit everything. Oh, I did see a question on what is Ibotta. So let's go there super fast um, with coupon apps and in terms of saving money, if cutting coupons, you know, looking at the list on Southern Savers, if cutting coupons makes you panic and the idea of that is not doable, um, then I would encourage you to at least be using mobile apps. Uh, Ibotta is the biggest of all of the couponing apps and with Ibotta, you can go in, you can save any of these offers. I had this one pulled up because it's a deal at Target right now on some makeup. Um, this is $3 back on any uh, Neutrogena Healthy Skin Makeup. Well, we also have a $4 printable right now yeah, that just came out. So you could get head to the database on Southern Savers, print the $4 coupon, plus you've got a $3 offer and they can stack together. That's $7 off of any Neutrogena cosmetics. But in Target, it would get even better because we have a Target Circle offer. Uh, and I can use that too. So I want you to think of Ibotta uh, and most of these mobile apps as kind of icing on the cake. You are using a paper coupon in the store. You can use these as well to save even more on those products. Um, so all you're gonna do, if you've never used these before, there's a little plus sign over here. I just clicked the plus sign, it turned into a check mark. I know you might not be able to see that if you're watching on your phone. And this is now saved. And then if I go to Target and I purchase this item, all I'm going to need to do is come home and submit my receipt to Target. So I hit redeem. It wants me to link my loyalty account. It's, it never works for me. I don't know why. I know my password, but it's not happy. Um, so all I need to do is just click upload receipt instead. And it's gonna walk me through how to take a picture of my Target receipt. So I paid for the item in the store. I use the coupon on that item in the store. I come home and I submit my receipt. So this is kind of the best way to think about it. It's like a mail-in rebate that you didn't have to mail in. I just take a picture of my receipt and then I get my money back. So pretty simple and easy to use. It does work at a ton of stores in your area uh, and there's a ton of offers that are in there. Uh, all of these, my goal is that they are matched in on the weekly ads on Southern Savers. So if you're looking at the Publix list and something had an Ibotta offer, it's hopefully gonna be there, the same for Target, uh, but you could always find them in the database as well. Um, so hopefully that helps, a super fast glimpse. There's a number of other couponing apps. 
I keep all of them in a little pocket together, but Ibotta is definitely the biggest. So um, Ibotta, Checkout 51, Saving Star, Fetch, those are the go-tos on those. One other app, since I mentioned Target Circle, is the Target app. Uh, if you are a regular Target shopper, you should be using the Target app and Target with uh, all of their offers. Uh, you have a ton of things that are in their app. The easiest way to do this is, uh, well, I guess you have two. You can search by barcode right there. It'll pull up a barcode. Uh, let's see, I have one national brand product. We can scan the barcode and see what it returns. Um, so there's, it's pulled up the pasta, um, but it's saying, you know what? We don't have any coupons for that. But down below it is saying, I've got coupons for ragu. I have coupons for other things. These are sales. Uh, in a sense. So this is 20% off of ragu pasta. I could still use a coupon here. I don't have to just use this. I can stack it with other offers. So for example, to come back, um, let's go circle again. I don't know why, but there's not a barcode scanner inside the circle side. You have to only do that from the front. So let's search for Neutrogena and look, there's a 10% off Neutrogena offer that I can stack with my $4 printable and my $3 Ibotta, and we're really not done yet. I can also stack it with, I have to go all the way back to find this guy. Um, sorry, my sister-in-law's have been texting me all day. Um, I can stack it with this. So it's a $5 Target gift card with any $20 beauty. Guys, it, re it really does make for a great deal. Um, so it's a 14 cent Neutrogena in the end. I do have that up on the Target list, so head to the Target list. Uh, and you'll see all of those deals, but you see how fun that is. So using this in the store, if you've not ever done it before, I'm not gonna look at it really quick. Um, so it'll log me out, um, turn off Apple Pay, and all, in the store, all you would do is scan that barcode and you're good to go. It's going to apply all of your Target coupons right there at the register. If you have your red card linked, it's going to pay as well. I do, which is why I didn't look at it. Um, so that you guys don't see my red card barcode, but um, that's, that's how easy it is. You load any of these offers that you wanna use, and once they're loaded, so I click Save Offer, once it's loaded, I just scan that barcode and I have the savings. So super easy to save money in Target. There's a number of offers that are just Target only and make for some good prices, uh, and all you had to do was just use their app. Uh, so if you aren't using your store's app, you're missing out on digital coupons for all the stores too. Um, you know, just in terms of every store that's out there, even Dollar General and Family Dollar have digital coupons. So using their app to find them, if you're regularly in those stores, it is going to save you money without you really having to put a lot of effort into it. Every store, I, well, I can't speak for Family Dollar. I have not used their app, but every other store has a barcode scanner even. So if I'm walking through Publix and I'm curious, I can scan the barcode with the Publix app and it will tell me whether or not there, there are offers on anything in the store. So whatever store app you're using, barcode scanner your items, grab any coupons that apply and boom, you just became a couponer without even having to get out a pair of scissors. It's that simple. All of these offers as well, the digital offers, we try to have all of those matched in on the list on Southern Savers as well. So if you are using the list, the goal is that any coupon that is out is matched in with the sale so that you kind of know about everything before you get to the store and what those offers are. Um, how do I feel about Food Lion and their buy two get one pr promo? So Lynn, that's a, the major promos that Food Lion runs that I actually like. So when Food Lion does run the buy two get ones, um, they tend to put them on sale first and then they put them buy two get one free. So it actually does make for some pretty good prices, definitely once we throw in coupons, but sadly they don't even run those, but you know, maybe every six or eight weeks. So it kind of leaves you hanging in the meanwhile in between those sales. Uh, but there are some decent ones and when they run a lot of them, that can make it worthwhile if that was just the store that you were nearby. Um, and Deborah, thank you for chiming in on that. So I bought it is only for smartphones. And then if you don't have a smartphone, uh, you can use Saving Star, you can use Checkout 51 on your computer and take a picture of your receipt and upload it to those apps and you would be good. Um, so Kristen's asking, what has changed with Kellogg's rewards? 
So Kellogg's Family Rewards, not a lot of a lot of things have changed there. They no longer have the codes in the boxes, but they haven't done that for a number of years. And with Kellogg's, you can now link uh, your store cards for some stores, not all, but you can link your store cards to where when I buy Kellogg's, it automatically tells them. I don't need to take any pictures of receipts. I don't need to do any work even. If I bought Kellogg's in a store that was linked, I'm earning points. Uh, and you want to earn points with Kellogg's Family Rewards because for every, what is it, 850 points, you can redeem them for $1 off coupons on any cereal, any uh, Eggos waffles, you know, whatever your favorite products are, $1 off coupons, it's pretty sweet. 850 points sounds like a lot, but you actually can earn them pretty quickly. And they put out codes all the time. There's actually a code right now for uh, 100 points. Uh, and if you, uh, let me see, I can try to go digging and find that. We posted that uh, over the weekend, but um, I think I know what category he's in. So I will pull that code if you're curious and try to stick it in the comments. Um, so with Kellogg's Rewards, they're one of the best rewards programs that's out there. If you don't wanna worry about entering receipts for them though, and you're like, eh, I don't really care on the points, still sign up for their emails um, because their emails regularly do send coupons that are specific to you. And they'll be still 50 cents, 75 cent coupons. They can only be printed twice and then they don't work anymore. So I couldn't share that email with someone else. It's my email, um, but it's worth signing up for. So sign up for Kellogg's Family Rewards. Even if you don't earn points, you still get some pretty sweet emails with coupons in them. Uh, and there are a number of other brands that do the same. So anytime you're looking specific for coupons that are brands that you want, signing up for that brand's email can sometimes be the way to go in terms of getting some, some great offers that you wouldn't have normally seen. They may not put them on their website, they just send them to the people that get their emails. So if you have a brand you love, do that. Sign up for their emails um, and, and hopefully you're gonna get some extra savings for doing that. Um, Okay, to jump back in. Um, oh, and Hope says you're in Florence and you have more food lions than anything else. Uh, I know it's probably not what you wanna hear that more are possibly even coming. Um, I know at one point Florence had a Harris Teeter. I don't know if you still have a Harris Teeter, Hope, but if you do, I would highly recommend Harris Teeter. Uh, they may seem high, but they run a ton of buy one get ones and they double coupons. So if you still have Harris Teeter, try to make that your store at least for a few weeks and try it out. I think you'd be pretty surprised on the savings. Um, okay, well, I think we've hit everyone's questions um, in terms of trying to get through everything tonight. I know I was a little all over the board. I had a lot that I wanted us to try to cover. Um, going through tonight, one of my big things uh, was, you know, your homework in a sense, trying to get into shopping a drugstore if you weren't already shopping a drugstore. Uh, so thinking about what is next week um, for the 29th, uh, and I think that that's actually where we'll go. It wasn't my plan for the 29th, but I, we have not talked the drugstores in a while. Um, so let's do that. Let's talk CVS and Walgreens at length next Monday night, how to get started, how to do better if you've already started. Uh, for those of you who have done that one before with me, I would encourage you to please come and just be in the comments and help folks out uh, because there are so many folks that are trying to learn how to save and the drugstores are a huge way to do it. Uh, for me, I spent a whopping 19 cents in CVS this week. On uh, We only grabbed a few of the deals that we did, but still 19 cents uh, and got back $20 in rewards. So it's always fun to shop the deals uh, and pay basically nothing for them. And hopefully it'll be kind of fun for you too, but also a huge saver for your budget. So we will cover that next Monday night at 8.30. So join in with me. Uh, and then the week after that, we'll be back to school. So you may not be ready for it, but back to school season is really only like two weeks away, guys. It is, it is here. Uh, so we're going to cover that one in a couple weeks. So thanks for joining me tonight. I hope that we hit some things, maybe some encouraging things, get you started on meal planning a little bit more, some ways to cut the budget a little bit more too. If you've got any questions between now and next Monday, you can always send me a Facebook message. I'm a little bit faster with Facebook messages or an email, Jenny at southernsavers.com. So hopefully this helps you guys uh, and I will talk to you again next week. Y'all have a great week.